Um, you know, it's really funny because all of these songs uh, actually go with what God has given me tonight. And so um, I'm just going to ask him just to come upon me. I haven't been up here for a few weeks. And so, Lord, I just ask now that, that your anointing would come. Come fill this place, first of all, that all of our hearts would be open to hear what the spirit of the living God has to say. I pray, God, that your anointing would fall upon me that you bring out the word in spirit and truth, and God, that you and you alone would get the glory for that. I pray chains to be broken, minds to be changed, strongholds to come down in the name of Jesus. I pray oppression to leave, depression to leave, seasonal depression I take authority over and tell you to leave now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for the sun. God, it's beautiful outside, but listen, we are beautiful inside because you are the sun. Yeah. That you can bring joy and you can bring, Father, dancing even in the midst of clouds over this area. So I thank you for that. So, Lord, I just thank you that we are your children and that you love us. Amen. In Jesus' name, all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So um, I have a couple things for today. Um, and so I want to, let me just get myself set up here. So one of the things God has been showing me today is about submission and how there is strength in submission. And so, um, you know, the Lord, he just really moves. And one of the things that I really felt led this morning um, to listen to, and we're going to sing it at the end, it's Surrender, the Surrender song by Lincoln Brewster, who is an old-time singer. But the songs are anointed, right? No matter who sings them, the, lyri the lyrics are brought in by the Holy Spirit. So heaven owns all of worship. Amen. Heaven owns it. And so I just thank God that we get to use it, that he's created all these talented people that hear him and bring life from the Spirit of God through worship music. And it brings us into deep places that we need to go with God. Whether it is a place of joy and you're dancing throughout your house as you're cleaning, or you're just remembering about holy water and how you've been washed by the blood of the Lamb, right? And all these different things. Well, there's a song called Surrender. And so... Um, this is the words. This is the lyrics. It says, I'm giving you my heart and all that is within me. I lay it all down for your sake. Excuse me. I lay it all down for the sake of you, my king. I'm giving you my dreams. I'm laying down my rights. I'm giving up my pride for the promise of new life. And I surrender to you. All to you. I surrender all to you. All to you. I'm singing you this song. I'm waiting at the cross. Anybody been waiting at the cross? Rather it's this cross or the cross in your heart and mind at home. So I'm waiting at the cross. And all the world holds dear, I count it as my loss. So everything that the world is holding dear, we count it as loss. Because guys, listen, there's a cost to following Jesus. There's a cost to be in ministry. Rather it's in your job, rather it's on the road, rather it's in a church. There's a cost of your time for free. There's a cost of your emotions that aren't always what you want them to be. But you trust God in your emotional states because he's right there with you. There's a cost. So we need to sit there and remember that he's got us. So it says, we, and all the world holds dear, I count as a loss. For the sake of knowing you, for the glory of your name. For the sake of knowing you and the glory of his name, to know the lasting joy, even sharing your pain. Listen, Jesus knows your pain. He knows your anxieties. He knows your struggles. He's been there. There's nothing that we go through that he has not been through in some way or another. So we surrender all to him, all to you. 
So I'm giving you my heart and all that is within me. So what is in you? What is happening in your life? What are you going through? What are you thinking? What is happening to you and in your life right now? So let's just give them our, our hearts and everything that's within us. We lay it down for the sake of you, my king. And so I want to go to James. I want to go to James, which is in the New Testament. We're going to be in chapter 4. Chapter 4. Hallelujah. What's the page number? 1388. So um, James is actually going to get this up there. Um, and I'm going to go through it, and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to go through it some more. So at first I was just going to start in verse 7, but I'm going to start in verse 6. Um, so in chapter 4, verse 6, and, and so it starts with, but he being God, he, capital H, in the middle of a sentence, is him. So he gives more grace. Therefore he says, therefore God says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. That's what he does. God will resist our pride. But when we're broken and when we're humble, he gives you great grace. Grace that is beyond your ability. It's heaven bound for you and for me. It says, therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you and me. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. So guys, I'm just going to talk about that for just a minute. I'm going to talk about the first couple of scriptures. Because there's the greatest grace is found in the posture of humility. The greatest grace from God is found from the, in the posture of humility, so of surrender. So when we just surrender all, everything, our families, our jobs, our businesses, our money, our new homes, whatever that is, we want to surrender it to God, give it back to him, and say, God, this is yours. I want it to be used for your glory. I want my life. Here's my heart. Here's my heart. So I want my life to be glory for the kingdom of heaven, to bring you all the glory, for people to see the difference in a life of somebody who walks with Jesus, who's not perfect, who's quick to repent when they even offend you or me. Like we own it. And we say, man, I, I was hasty in that thought. I was hasty in that comment. Man, forgive me. Forgive me for that. I'm going to tell you a quick story about that. Mario was just here. He was part of the men's conference, and, and uh, I was talking to him before he left. And then again yesterday on the phone, he, he, um, he needs prayer right now because after serving God like that, the devil meets you in the car. Right, Larry? Right, Dan? I mean, he, you all know when you, when you minister in any level, praying for people in your prayer closet, he, the devil's right there to try to bring you down and try to tell you you ain't worth nothing and God ain't hearing your word and you didn't help anybody, and that's what he does. But he's a liar. That's why we got to know the word. That's why we got to know who we are in Christ. And we have to know our authority, and we have to have confidence and that authority that we have, but it's only in Christ. When you step outside of Christ and you're out here in your own strength and your own will and your own mind and your own agenda, ugh, it's icky, right? So anyways, he was telling me that, that last year his daughter Maddie was going through some problems with some girls at school. This year it's guys, and I put out a prayer request for people to be praying for her because bullying is a serious thing. And last year she was being bullied, and Mario, he got just all upset, and Mario, uh, he's got such a broken heart for the Lord, but in a day he was a naughty boy. He was a fighter, and his wife, his ex-wife, excuse me, who is Maddie's mom, and they're great friends today, um, Annabelle, she is a fighter. She will knock you out, right? Well, Maddie's not this way. Maddie's tender-hearted. She's nothing like her mom and dad, and it's, like, weird to them because they're just used to this, this fight thing, you know? 
So anyways, dad gets on the phone and he calls up this, the mom because the school didn't do anything about it. So he goes, oh, I'll go to the mom. Well, the mom was like, you know, it's a kid's thing. Wouldn't do anything about it. And Mario got mad, you know. And he says, well, I'm just telling you, if anything happens to my daughter, you're going to know it. And she goes, oh, okay, um, uh, rehab, who, somebody who went through rehab and loves Jesus. Yeah, immediately he said, oh, my gosh, you're right, forgive me. Amen. Forgive me. He goes, man, I just don't know what to do. It's my daughter, and I love her. And she's hurting, and I want to help her. So I'm reaching out to you, but I just handled it all wrong. I'm sorry. Amen. You know, and that's when God can come in. Yeah. Because he repented quickly. So, see, so the grace of God rests on us when we are just in a posture of surrendered lives to Jesus. We don't get to do it the world's way. We don't get to complain and say, well, why can Dan do it? But David can't. Well, you shouldn't even ask that. That's just all you. God is doing things in everybody's lives. So we all should be growing. There should be evidence in our lives that we are being transformed. If you go back and you start living your old life, I promise you, you are going to be miserable. Miserable. Don't go back. God says you've got to keep going forward. So today, he wants to cleanse your heart of the things that have drawn you back into your old man. He wants us to be postured. And surrender so that his great grace that his word talks about in James will be there. Amen. So you can't get that in your own strength. You can't be fake. You have to be real. And real comes with a changed heart and a changed life. Will you be perfect? Absolutely not. Mario was not perfect. Mario loves God. He, he's serving the Lord on many levels. But when it came to his daughter, he flared up. But the minute that the lady said to him, instead of him coming back, spit and spew and venom, he humbled himself. Amen. And that's what we all need to do. So I'm just using his as example because trust me, Mario's not perfect uh, by any means. You all know that. But he goes, man, mom, God teaches the best lessons. Amen. Doesn't he? Because yeah. when you learn from God, Versus from what I say or you think or whatever, you learn a lesson. And it doesn't leave you unless you walk away from God, which you can do. But I suggest not. So God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. It says, so submit to God equals submitting to God is when you get the most power. Do you know that? Because, see, when you submit to God and I submit to God and we're surrendered to him, that's when you're to resist the devil because now you are in a place, a posture of humility. You're there. And so when you, when you get to this place of surrender, you walk in the authority now of Christ because you are walking in him. You're not walking outside in you. So then when you resist the devil and that authority, he will flee from you. He will give you the grace to resist the devil. He will give you the grace to overpower him and overtake him. And then he's got to flee. Why? Because we surrendered all of everything that we are within us to him. We don't get no rights. Mario didn't get any rights. In the world, it's like, yeah, call him. Yeah, get, in, get on that lady. But that wasn't the way to handle it. But that's the way that we handle things. But when he ended up doing the right thing, somehow, some way, things got better. I wonder why. I wonder why. Now it's a new year. She's going through a new trial. Now it's boys instead of girls. And she's tenderhearted. And, and he asked, please pray. So I prayed with him last night. And I sent him the armor of God. And I recorded the armor of God. And I sent it to him. And I said, put this on your daughter every day. Talk to her about it. Let her know. You know, guys, technology is amazing. Not always can they, when you bring the word with the anointing. And they're like, oh my gosh, this really affected me. Go back and record it and send it. Because then they're hearing it. Right? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing the word of God. And so now he can take 
take that word and he can pour it into his daughter and pour it into his own life and be surrendered and allow that armor to do what it's supposed to do, which is we're putting on Christ. And we need to every day. Our kids are battered. They're beat up. It's nothing like it was when we were in school. So we got to keep them covered and keep them in prayer. So we want to submit ourselves to God. We want to walk in the authority that he gives us so that when we're praying, Mary, Miss Mary, your child. Um, so anyways, when, when we're submitting to God, then God can do what only he can do. So then that is when we resist the devil. You know, because sometimes if you try to resist the devil in your own strength, he's going to dupe you every time. How many of you have been tempted and thought, oh, I can handle this, and you find out that you can't, right? So the grace of God gives you the wisdom to flee. Resist him, you flee, and he flees. Because if God made us and he tells us to flee, we need to flee. But then he tells us also to resist him. So in other words, give him no place. Don't even have dialogue with him. You're walking in authority and a grace and the power of the Holy Spirit at this point. Because you are rendered before God. You have completely given yourself over. You are sick and tired of the world and the way that the world does things and the way that people of the world tell you to do things. It's confusing. So we want to make sure that we are in a posture of surrender. And that's what God was talking to me about today. And that's why I went to James. So then here comes the invitation. Then it says after that, listen, the devil's going to flee for you. Now listen, the devil's going to flee from you. You're, 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 fleeing, you're, you're, you're there, right? Now he says, draw near to me. So see, this is the invitation. You've done it all that you're supposed to do now. Draw near to me. And then I will draw near to you. So see, we have a responsibility not just to walk away. Did you see this? How I just did, I, I just did that? Did you just see what I just did? And the devil ran. You know, then, and all of a sudden you just walk away and it's all about you. You forget that it was God. But when you go back and you draw near to God, and you're like, man, God, thank you for what you just did. Thank you that you love me. Thank you that you love my kids. Thank you, God, that, that you are taking care of everything. And I just got to continue to trust you and surrender. I surrender all to you, God, because you are the only way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And I want to be there. I want to walk there. I don't want to go back and live in the sewage that you took me out of. There's nothing there. When I stand before God... And he says, what have you done for the kingdom of heaven? Because he's going to ask me. See, the judgment seat for Christians is what have you done for me? How have you lived your life? What have you done? And I want to say, God, I lived a surrendered life where you could use me at any moment. And I promise you, I don't do that. There's times if God wanted to use me I really would have not done, I not, would have not been a good example. But there's grace. Then he takes us to these scriptures and he brings these songs in. And he's like, just surrender, come back. Guys, some of us have been serving God for a long time. And we've just heard it all. We're out there, we got the internet, we got all this information coming in. We can do anything. But listen, how often do you get up here? Amen. How often do you come in and say, I just, I know what my week has been, and I just need to surrender everything within me? Because you're the only one that knows what my tomorrow is going to bring. You're the only one, God, that knows what next week is going to look like. And I want to bring glory. That last song that we, that we sang that you guys have been singing on the last couple of weeks um, I took a picture of the lyrics because it's so powerful. I lift my hands up, lay my whole life down, my whole life down before you. I lift my hands up. I lay my whole life down, my whole life down before you. You want to know what stops you from doing that? Pride. So what does God do with prideful people? He resists them. 
well, how come God doesn't hear me? How come I'm this? And how come I'm messed up? And how come this? And why is everything a mess? And why don't I have any confidence? And why am I feeling all these attacks? And why am I doing this? Well, it's time to search our hearts. There's a good possibility that there's pride in there. You know, that we've been, that we haven't been asking him to search our hearts. Where am I living in pride, God? Where are the areas, not that I walk in it like it's just blatant, like I'm like this idiot prideful person. It's not that, it's sneaky, it's subtle. So search my heart, God, where am I living in pride? What part of my life am I living in pride? Where am I thinking only of myself? Where am I isolating myself to my own understanding and reasoning? In other words, I rise myself up above everybody else's opinions, thoughts, experiences, their walk with God, and I am the one that knows it all. Pride. There is a humbleness in knowing the things of God. There is an assuredness that comes from the, the Spirit of God. There's something that comes from the Spirit of God that rises us above pride. Even when we know that we know that we know, there's a humbleness in it. There's not fighting, there's not finger pointing, not all this. Dan, can you go look in my refrigerator for something that has bubbles in it? I don't know if there's anything in there. Thank you. And then, where am I exalting my thoughts above God's holy scriptures? Because we do that without realizing it. We do that. And so it's important that we do a self-examination. Like I say to God, search my heart. When I see where I've sinned and I'm struggling with something in my life, which is often, I say, God, please search my heart. Show me because I don't want to live like this. I don't want to feel like this. I don't want these thoughts. I don't want this. I don't want this. So there's something in me. I don't look at you. What's wrong with that person? What's wrong with him? Why is he bugging me? Why is she doing that? Why? Why? I don't look at you all. I look at me. What is it in me that you are trying to show me? What is it? What is coming up? that I want to come up, but it's so painful. But what, what is it, God? He'll show you if you really want to know. And it's never pretty, guys. It's never pretty. But it is freedom coming because we are surrendered with everything that is within us. We don't see the stuff. We just see our good stuff, the stuff that we think is good. We don't, we don't pay attention to our nasties. But God does. So I'm going to submit myself to God's wisdom. I'm going to submit myself, and I'm going to resist the devil. That will be perfect. Thanks, babe. I'm going to draw near to the Lord. So there is a remedy, guys. It is in James 4. Things that we should do, things that we should live, and all of that. And so we all, I know every one of you in here, want to be submitted to God. I don't doubt that at all in your lives. But I believe that the devil comes and we don't resist him because we don't recognize him. But if we continue to submit ourselves to the Lord and do what he's telling us, be humble, he will give us a grace and an ability to see the devil. And then when we resist him, we'll go draw near to God. And there is just this pattern flowing that God wants to use so that we can walk into a freedom. And then we're going to go to this place and we're just going to submit to God's wisdom. We're going to resist the devil. I'm going to draw near to the Lord and I know that he's going to draw to me. And it also talks about when we are double-minded, we're double-minded because of pride. We're double-minded because of pride. So when you find yourself going like this, somewhere in your flesh, in pride, you are fighting and resisting what God is trying to get you to do. So then you go through this pattern again. Okay, I'm going to posture myself before you, God. I'm just going to lay myself out, and I'm just going to surrender. I'm just going to surrender. I'm not going to think about it. I'm going to ask you, God, to reveal it. 
I'm going to do everything that I know to do according to the scripture, and I'm going to hear you. I'm going to draw near to you, and you're going to have me rise above whatever it is. You're going to show me where my pride, my self-sufficient flesh, does not want to submit to the things of God. So there's patterns. There's remedies in the word of God from God himself to help us overcome all things in him. So, when we're double-minded and we're pride, this is when we believe that we have this measurement of ourselves as being the measurement of everything. In other words, we know it all, pretty much. We don't, but he does. So when you feel like you can't do it and you're struggling, that is a good place to be. But that is a place where you know that you need to go and sit before the Lord. And be okay that you're not perfect. And be okay that you don't know what to do and you don't have the answers. Because that is when we yield to God. And he'll bring you new life. Do you know that? He may, you may have an answer that you've learned from the word and study, but this is not the answer for this particular problem. So whenever you go to God, he could bring you a new answer because the word is living and he will do great and mighty things through it. So, you know, it's okay to have the knowledge and to know because the word is the word, but take the time to step back before we release that word without understanding that the spirit has to be behind that word. Because otherwise, it's just a word. It's of no effect. And there might be something else that God wants you to do. So, God's going to draw near to us. He's going to forgive us. He's going to help us walk in a surrendered state if we want to. He's going to forgive us for thinking our, uh, all about us versus him. Because we get there. And guess what, guys? You're strengthened in surrender. You are and I am strengthened in surrender. So when we surrender and submit ourselves to God completely, he comes. He sees our weakened state right where we need to be. Humble, God, I, I can't raise my kids without you. I can't even remember to pray for my grandkids every day. I can't this and I can't that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Praise God. But when you take it to him, he's the one that will lift us up. He's the one that will strengthen us. So when the devil is trying to tell you that you're nothing, that you're a failure, you can resist him. And then draw near to God because now through your surrender, excuse me, I'm sorry. Now through my surrender and your surrender, we're strengthened. Now we can hear God. We are humble. We've confessed. We've asked God to come. And sometimes when you've been coming to a church for a long time, you just come. You figure that you know it all. When in reality, God is trying to knock on the doors of our hearts and say, listen, there's some issues there that you don't even see anymore. We just think that we live surrendered lives when in reality we don't. But when you go through some brokenness, you realize, geez, I have not been humble before my Lord. I've been doing it without him. And God says that everything is possible through him, not through me. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. So God, I thank you and I praise you. You are the great I am, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. And tonight, God, we are going to draw near. We're going to surrender. We're going to be in a posture of surrender before you. And we are going to draw near to you, God. You are going to pour grace on us. Lord, show us. Because we want to know. We want to know. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen. Amen.